TV KPM Okay Oh What's this on the table? Oh, it's a poem The Passionate Shepherd to His Love by Christopher Marlowe Hmm Come live with me and be my love And we will all the pleasures prove That valleys, groves, hills and fields Woods or steepy mountain hills Huh? What does this actually mean? I, I don't understand I know it's in English But what is the poet trying to say? Um, maybe I could ask uh, Hmm, what does this hi, mean? Hi, Oh, hi, Puan A You look troubled Yes, um, I found this poem on the table The A Passionate poem. Shepherd to His Love mm. But I don't seem to understand what he's trying to say Oh, no worries. This is a beautiful poem entitled The Passionate Shepherd to His Love, right? Yes. Okay, um, let's read to this poem together. Oh, all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. You are now watching Upper Secondary or also known as Menenga Atas on Dedit TV KPM together with me, Sean Steven, as your host. Now, before we begin, I'd like to remind you to always follow the SOPs in place in our battle against COVID-19 to flatten the curve. Obviously, you have to wear your face mask when you're not at home, uh, use hand sanitizer or uh, wash your hands as frequently as possible using both water and soap. And when you among other people, ensure that the distance between you and that person is at least one meter apart and as you saw just earlier we have a wonderful teacher that'll be joining us today and that is none other than puan a hi puan a hi how are you doing so far good good all right and also uh, before we begin maybe you could also uh well sanitize your hands all right uh, we have to make sure that we follow all the sops in place both of us are wearing our face masks our distance yes we are nothing less of one meter and um i believe today it's not just the both of us right Right. Yes, we also have uh, my friends who are actually waiting online to join us today. Let's see who they are. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. All right, all the bright and happy faces are going to join us uh, in our lesson today. But first, let, uh, let us uh, find out who they are. Maybe you can introduce yourself. We're going to start off first with um, Angel. Hi, my name is Angel, but you can call me Angel. I'm from SMK Asunta. <laughs> Thank you very much, Angel. Uh, next, we have um, Sophia. Hello, everyone. My name is Sophia, and I'm from SMK Asunta. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Lynette. Hello, everybody. My name is Lynette, and you can call me Lynn. Lynn. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, we also have Delphine. Hello, my name is Delphine Thompson, but you can call me Delphine. Thank you, Delphine. Next, we have Amanda. Hi, my name is Amanda DeWitt, but you can call me Amanda. I'm from SMK Asunta too. Thank you very much. And last but not least, we have Durga. Hello, everyone. My name is Durga Devi Party, and you can call me Durga. I'm from SMK Asunta. Thank you very much. And just in case for those of you who are watching at home, if you haven't heard the school yet, they are actually from SMK Asunta Totaling Jaya that's going to join us for our lesson today. But before we continue, I actually like to ask Puan A, what exactly are we focusing on today? Okay, um, we want to look at that poem today, yes. titled uh, The Passionate Shepherd to His Love, written by uh, Christopher Marlowe, a oh. famous poet who lived mm -hmm. in the time of William Shakespeare, ah. the great bard himself. All right. And then we'll look at certain elements, mm -hmm. specifically the use of imagery that makes the language of the poem especially beautiful. I see. All right, point A, I also believe that you're going to show us something on the slides as well. 
correct. So, for all you ladies and gentlemen out there preparing for your lessons today, this is a quick reminder regarding poetry in general. When we refer to poetry, we are referring to section C of the literature paper, and that means uh, the Passionate Shepherd to His Love is only one out of the ten that these pupils will analyse thoroughly with their teachers. And what I would like to say here is I find a lot of pupils out there making remarks about how they feel poetry is intimidating, okay. frightening because they feel they have to memorise the entire text. But I'd like to quickly remind everybody out there that when you are preparing for the, this subject, never fear. The poems will always be provided for you. Ah, so. Anytime you have an assessment, mm -hmm. the poems will be provided for you. All you have to worry about is to focus on thoroughly analysing the text and then responding to the given tasks with a personalized discussion ah, all, right? all right so in particular for today's lesson we are going to look at christopher marlowe's poem specifically the setting where is it set the shepherd the persona found in the poem as well as i will probably ask our pupils who are with us today mm -hmm. what they feel what they think about what we've read with them so far all right mm. All right, so and before we continue, we're going to take a short break and be back to you for Upper Secondary on Didit TV KPM. Didit TV KPM. Didit TV KPM. And we are back uh, for Upper Secondary on Didit TV KPM together with me, Sean Steven, and also Puan A for our subject for today, which is English literature. We'll be focusing on this poem, or poetry, uh, The Passionate Shepherd to His Love by Christopher Marlowe. All right, so let's begin our lesson. All right. Over to you. Thank you. So, before we look at the poem, let's look at the man who wrote the text. Ah. We have here a little bit of information regarding Christopher Marlowe and it says here he was born in 1564, the same year that William Shakespeare was born. I see, okay. It's, it is interesting to note that Christopher Marlowe lived during the time of William Shakespeare and in actual fact was considered a great influence on William Shakespeare's works also. Mm -hmm. If you remember reading through about the man, he, in his own right, received recognition through many of his works, celebrated in his own right. Unfortunately, Sean, sadly, in 1593, Christopher Marlowe died at the young age of 29. Oh, no. That's just a little bit about the poem. Now, moving on mm -hmm. to the poem. Written in the 1590s, what we have here is The Passionate Shepherd. Yes. All right, who is addressing his lady love in an effort to persuade and woo her to join him and live with him in the countryside. Okay. In the poem, you will find that he declares his affection, declares his love for her in hopes that she will reciprocate positively. And we will read till the end, try to figure out whether she will eventually do so, do so or okay. not. All right. right. Okay. All right. So this is, for all of you out there, The Passionate Shepherd to His Love. It is, as you can see, if you're taking a look at the physical layout of the text, made up of six stanzas. All right. All right. Uh, it begins with that first line, Come live with me and be my love. If you take a quick look, you will realize that it is a line that in actual fact is repeated more than once in this text. So it suggests to mm -hmm. all of us that the shepherd was truly intent on, number one, declaring his love, yep. and number two, persuading the lady love to join him. Ah, right? right. So the passionate shepherd to his love, as you can see, is made up of six stanzas. It 
is considered a love poem uh, following the pastoral lyric tradition. And we will get to that in a moment. All right. What is a pastoral poem? You can see that the poem itself overall has a rhyme scheme of A, A, B, B, mm -hmm. a total number of 24 lines. Okay. You can also see that overall, as you read the poem out loud, there is relatively a relaxed and playful tone. Okay. All right? So, some of you out there might be wondering, what did Puan A just say? She seems like she mentioned a pastoral poem. Yes, what's right? that exactly? A pastoral poem would have these elements. What's recognized as a pastoral poem written during that time would be a poem that has the shepherd as its main character or persona. Okay. Many descriptions of nature a lot of music and dance, a lot of happy and sincere emotions. Mm -hmm. Pretty much a feel-good poem. Okay. Right? Yeah. A feel-good poem with the shepherd as the persona. However, a lot of scholars will also point out mm -hmm. that a pastoral poem, although it sounds ideal, although yeah. it sounds perfect, it is unrealistic in hmm. a sense. Okay. Let's yeah. see if you agree All right. when we read through the poem. Right. Here we have, ladies and gentlemen, the first three stanzas of the poem. Now, um, you have their poems one and two, and what I'm hoping to do is to get one of the pupils there to help me read out, recite the first two stanzas and son answer some of my questions. Would that be all right? Um, Lynette, would you do me a favor sure. and read out stanzas one and two? Okay. Come live with me and be my love, and we will all the pleasures prove that hills and valleys, days and fields, and all the craggy mountain yields. There we will sit upon the rocks and see the shepherds feed their flocks. By shallow rivers to whose falls melodious birds sing mild marjoram. All right, thank uh, you. Yeah. Well. All right. Okay, yeah, she said it. All thank right. you so much. Yes. Um, upon reciting that poem, I'm sure some of you will be able to answer my question Where does this passionate shepherd live? Can Delphine maybe answer? Where does the passionate shepherd live? I would say somewhere in the countryside. Okay, because, when you um, say countryside, where is the textual evidence? How did you get to that answer? Well, we see words like hills and valleys, dales and fields, and the craggy mountains. So that would indicate that it's definitely not in the city, but more of the countryside. Very good. Now, next question. As we move on to the second stanza, Maybe you find other um, examples of setting to show to yes. us this is where he lives? We have shallow rivers. We have shallow rivers. And we can see shepherds feeding their flocks as well. Very good. Now, I would like to ask Delphine, since if you don't know, she's a beautiful singer. Oh, right. Okay. Very okay. talented. Yeah. Now, did you notice that in stanza 2, you also have auditory imagery, sound imagery? What sounds good here in stanza 2? We have melodious birds singing. Melodious birds singing, madrigals, right? Um, I'm sure some of you will be asking, what in the world is a madrigal? Very good question. All right? And yes. a madrigal, in actual fact, is a vocal performance. Mm -hmm. Uh, unaccompanied by instruments. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Something so like you that. have there yeah. Delphine's answer, not only the visual imagery, but the auditory imagery or sound imagery that indicates to us this is where the shepherd lives. Uh -huh. This is the countryside where he lives. And these are the attractions of 
living in the countryside. Okay. All right. Now you will notice the setting has been conveyed using visual imagery, mm -hmm. and that means imagery that pertains to our sense of sight. What can we visualize? Yeah. What can we imagine seeing? Mm -hmm. So the shepherd begins by saying, "Come, live with me and be my love." And these are all awaiting you. Aha. Ah, okay. The countryside is gorgeous. Look at the scenery. Look at the landscape. And he says to his beloved, we will sit upon the rocks and we will enjoy watching the shepherds feed their flocks mm -hmm. and the sound imagery also attractive. The gurgling water of the waterfalls, Ooh. the birds singing. Mm -hmm. Uh, now maybe the audience will be imagining sitting with the handsome shepherd on the rocks, yes. living with him mm -hmm. in the countryside. Now, let's take a look at stanza three. Moving on, and I will make the beds of roses with a thousand fragrant posies, a cap of flowers, and a kirtle embroidered all with leaves of myrtle. I wonder if I could ask again about the imagery found in this stanza. Maybe Sophia Arisa. The imagery found in the stanza is visual and sound imagery. Sound and visual imagery. Could you give me examples where you found the textual evidence? For the visual imagery, I would say um, sit upon the rocks and see the shepherds feed their flocks. All right. Then now we we'll move on to stanza three. And with the posies, for stanza tree, uh -huh. for the visual and smell imagery, I would say the bit of roses and the fragrant posies. Right. Some of you may be wondering when Sophia Arisa mentioned the posies, and I have a posy right here. A posy is a small bouquet of flowers. Okay. And so the shepherd says in this stanza, "I will make thee beds of roses, wow. and I will give you." A thousand fragrant posies every day. I swear, I'll give you a thousand of these. Ooh, all right, all and right. then what can happen is you can wear a cap of flowers, all right? Even wear a kirtle embroidered with leaves of myrtle. Okay, I think most of you would have already guessed or come to this conclusion. Mm -hmm. This really is a floral stanza. Oh, yes, There's it is. plenty of flowers that's mm -hmm. being described here. All right. So as Sophia mentioned earlier, the visual imagery there mentioned, the beds of roses, and then the posies, these bouquets of flowers, and then the cap of flowers, also with the kirtle worn. I'm sure some of you are wondering, what is a kirtle? And a kirtle, back in those days, is your outer petticoat or gown. Okay. All right? Yeah. So you would have that outer petticoat or gown also with flowers oh, and wow. leaves of myrtle. Yes. Why did you say wow? Because there's just an overload of flowers everywhere. There's Not only on the outside, yes, but also on like, the outer correct. petticoat. So that's just an overload of flowers, I, I, I believe, that he's promising towards his love. He is, as I'm sure you have noticed, in his efforts to confess his love for his lady friend. These are the flowers that I can give you every day. I think that's the association most men have. Yeah, in I nature, so. mm -hmm. flowers symbolize love and I will give you these every day quick question maybe to durga quick question if i could uh durga if i promised you these flowers every day a thousand fragrant posies hmm what say you um thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you but it sounds like there's a thank but you, at the end but, of the sentence but i couldn't accept Oh, oh no. she's not so keen. Okay, what about Amanda? Would Amanda say yes to a thousand fragrant posies on a daily basis? This is what he's promising the lady love. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> oh. oh no. Oh no, could I could I ask why? A cap well, of flowers um... and then a thousand fragrant posies? 
don't most women love flowers? Well, I would want more than flowers. I ah, see. Okay, I okay. love that answer. Yeah. Because what will happen is later on, mm -hmm. we will look at stanzas four, five, and six. Yes. And we will see if Amanda likes the offer and the promises made by the shepherd. That's true. And I can't wait for that as well. We have just completed uh, stanzas one to three. Right after this, we're going to take a short break and we come back for standards 4 to 6. Don't go anywhere. This is Upper Secondary on Didit TV, KPM. Didit TV, KPM. Didit TV, KPM. And we are back for Upper Secondary on Didit TV, KPM. For our subject for today, which is English literature, our topic is poetry, the passionate shepherd, to His Love by Christopher Marlowe. My name is not Sean the Shepherd, but Sean Stephen together with Puan A. <laughs> Alright, so uh, just before the break, we have actually completed chapter, uh, sorry, not chapters, but stanzas one, two, three of the poem with a little bit something on chapter, uh, sorry, on stanza three. Right. Yeah. So just before the break, what we took a look at was the fact that stanza three was also filled with visual and smell imagery the very floral stanza which describes in vivid detail the sweet smelling flowers to which one of my pupils actually declined oh, the offer no. was rejected sadly but moving on we're going to look at stanzas four and five mm -hmm. and let's see if the promises made by the shepherd yep not sean the shepherd <laughs> is going to attract the young ladies that i have here all right. So All right. we have here stanzas four and five. A gown made of the finest wool, which from our pretty lambs we pull. Mm -hmm. Woolen gowns, yeah. Fair lined slippers for the cold with buckles of the purest gold. So he's promising her footwear. I see. That has golden buckles. Wow. In stanza right. five. A belt of straw and ivy buds with coral clasps and amber studs. And this perhaps could be the most expensive uh, pledge or promise mm -hmm. that the shepherd makes. Yeah. Thinking about it, it might be a belt of straw, but it is accessorized, studded with coral and amber. And wow. in those days, mm -hmm. considered very much valuable because they were precious stones. Yes. And he says at the end of stanza five, and if these pleasures may be moved, mm -hmm. if you feel these are attractive offers that I am promising, pledging to you, come live with me and be my love. The same line that you said the first we stanza, encountered right? yeah. as we started reading this poem. Mm -hmm. So, maybe we could go back to Miss Amanda DeWitt. Maybe we could find some way of convincing Amanda. All right, Amanda, let's take a look at the gown of wool and the slippers with mm, these buckles of purest gold. All right, he says, yeah, in the stanza, this is what I promise you. Do you think he can fulfill those promises? I don't think so, because um, it seems a little bit unrealistic. Alright, could you elaborate on why you feel this promise that he is making is unrealistic? Well, um, for, for starters, gold is pretty hard to find, <laughs> so... That's an interesting opinion. He's a yeah. shepherd. Yes, which shepherd wages, Unless he's wages, a rich right. shepherd. Uh -huh. That's an interesting opinion. Yeah. All right, but what about the woolen gown? Do you think he would be able to get that made, per, you know, for her? I think he could. All right. Okay, mm -hmm. so we are sort of persuading like, Amanda over there. Yeah. Maybe we could ask um, Angel. The next question about the slippers with buckles of gold and a belt of straw. Same question that I asked Amanda, I shall now ask you, do you feel, do you feel the shepherd will be able to fulfill those promises, Angel? 
No. Uh oh. Oh no! Why not? Because it's at a countryside, uh -huh. so I don't think he'll be able to find glass slip to make his. You mean you feel coral and amber cannot be found? Yeah, at the countryside. At the countryside. Oh, she's got a different opinion. She feels that probably you can find the straw and ivy. Yeah. Those are indicative of Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. But what about the coral clasps and amber studs? So, um, these ladies here with me seem to say we are not convinced. Yes. But take a look, Angel, at the last two lines of stanza five, please. Take a look at these last two lines. If these pleasures may thee move, has your heart been moved, Angel? Please say yes. Slightly. Slightly. Oh, slightly. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sean is delighted to hear that. All right. Slightly. If these pleasures may thee move, come live with me and be my love. Will you say yes, Angel? No. <laughs> Still not convinced. Still, Still not, not convinced. convinced. It was one of them who said that flowers aren't enough, but now he is actually promising more than just flowers. Correct. So here is the essence of a pastoral poem. Mm -hmm. As you can see from stanza to stanza, you find that the promises made by the shepherd, yeah. they progress Aha. from nature, mm -hmm. what's around him, to what he says, I will provide for you. Yes. And I think the ladies are cautious. The pupils that I have today, mm -hmm. they're being careful because they are feeling, really, can the shepherd truly provide all this? Because the promises the shepherd makes progressively become harder to achieve, yeah. harder to fulfill. I think some of you out there, as you watch this lesson and read through the poem, you'll probably feel the same way. If truly he is a shepherd by profession, mm -hmm. would he truly be able to fulfill these promises that are made, all right, stanza by stanza? Now, moving on to the last stanza of the poem, and we are going to maybe ask Lynette, because I think I started with Lynette earlier. Miss Lynette Lopez, let's take a look at the last stanza, all right, where the persona declares to his beloved, the shepherd swains shall dance and sing for thy delight each May morning. He promises her that when the season comes, mm -hmm. you will have no lack of entertainment. Wow. The other young shepherds will perform for you. Wonderful. All right, and he reiterates that same I earlier idea, he says, if these delights thy mind may move, live with me and be my love. Lynette, would you like shepherds to perform for you? Please say sure, yes. I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 to try and persuade me. So Finally. I really thought about every aspect about my life, um, nature-wise, clothing-wise, even my feet, he, he's thought about. So. You know, I'll give him the benefit there. I'll Wonderful take it. Wonderful answer. She says this is such a caring shepherd. Yes. He's taken care of my clothes. Mm -hmm. He's taken care of my feet. Yeah. She likes to mention that the shepherd <laughs> takes care of his lady love's feet. Yeah. Also, preparing entertainment for her. Why won't you say no? All right? Yes. So, we looked at stanzas four, five, and six, and we saw textual evidence of the use of visual imagery in these three stanzas to show how the list of promises made by the shepherd grows mm. from what is provided in the scenery or in mother nature, and that's an element of pastoral poem, yep. the richness of mother nature, all right? So you've got there the gowns made of wool. You've got there the slippers with the buckles of gold. You've got there the coral clasp and amber studs. You even have the entertainment <laughs> provided. <laughs> yes. What more could we ask for? So 
from stanzas one to stanza six, you find that the shepherd has worked hard oh, to yes. convince, to mm -hmm. persuade his lady love. I really would like for you to come and join me. So that brings us to some of the themes that are found in this text. You find that the persona in this poem, the shepherd who is declaring his uh, honest and true emotions there, he promises a life of innocent pleasures, yes. free of uh, responsibilities, free of troubles, free of consequences. Mm -hmm. right? He takes a focal role, he's the main focus in this poem because as most pastoral poems are, the shepherd's life fulfilling his duties on a daily basis, caring for his flock of sheep. Yes. That's what adds to the charm of living in the countryside. Yeah. And then also not to forget, if you're considering the elements of country versus city living, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's saying to her, it's serene, it's gorgeous and peaceful and calm, in contrast to the hustle and bustle of living in the city. Why won't you come? and live with me. Yes. So when we look at the stanzas one to six, mm -hmm. you find that all these three elements, sorry, themes have been wonderfully conveyed and highlighted. Correct. I yeah. only am rather sad that none of my pupils today seem very convinced to join <laughs> the young shepherd. All right? Yeah. Uh, shall we continue? Let's take a look at mm -hmm. these discussion questions. All right. All right. And these are some discussion questions that we have regarding the poem. All right. The first question is, what might life in the countryside be like? Number two, what is your opinion of the shepherd, mm -hmm. the persona found in the poem? And question number three, has the shepherd been convincing and persuasive enough? Very interesting questions indeed. But let's give our friends who are online some time to think about their answers. We're going to take a short break and be back to you for Upper Secondary on Date TV KPM. Date TV KPM. Didet TV KPM. You are now watching Upper Secondary on Didet TV KPM together with Puan A as well as myself, Sean the Sheep. Nope, Sean the Shepherd. Nope, Sean Stephen. So let's continue uh, with our lesson. Just before our break, uh, Puan A asked or was going to ask our friends who are online uh, well, a list of questions. Shall All we continue? Right. All right, let's go. So just before the break, what we did was we gave the pupils I have here with me today mm -hmm. uh, three questions to think about and I wonder if they've had time to consider what their answers will be like. Let's start with the first question. And the question is, what might life in the countryside be like? If you were to be living in the countryside, how do you think life would be like? Maybe Sophia Arisa? I think life in the countryside will be like, you know, a bit relaxing and peaceful because it's far away from the busy city life. So it is relaxing. All right. So that's one idea. Could you give me maybe another idea about what life in the countryside would be like? Um, their daily routines would be a bit simple and not busy. Feel with All joy. Right. Correct. So it wouldn't just be relaxed. Your daily routines would also be simpler, less chaotic. True. Very true. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. That would be Sophia's answer about life in the countryside. But I wonder, does anybody have a different answer to that? Do you all feel life would be peaceful in the countryside? Durga, I wonder if you have a different answer. What would life um, be? I think it would be more slower comparing to the city life. You wouldn't notice the days going as fast 
the pace is obviously slower. Slow. All yeah. right. Yeah. Mm, would you like? Would you enjoy having a lifestyle like that? Don't forget, this is one of the most appealing ideas in the poem. Living in the countryside will have a more relaxed pace. I am not used to a relaxed pace, so I don't think I would find oh. it that appealing. <laughs> Sorry. This okay. is what you get when you address a bunch of urban children. <laughs> city and kids, so yes. used to living <laughs> in the city. And they're so used to the hustle and bustle of city life. Yes. But thank you, Durga, for that answer. That also indicates how any other young maiden of that time, mm -hmm. who was probably l similar to these uh, pupils I have, yep. if they are used to living in a city, living in a town, mm -hmm. And then considering the possibilities of living in the countryside, that's probably one of the concerns that they have. Okay, How would yeah. my daily routine be like living with the shepherd in the <laughs> countryside? Good answers, ladies. Moving on to question number two. Reading with me, stanzas one to six, what is your opinion of the passionate shepherd, Delphine? What do you think, think of him? He's just really, really in love with this girl. I think he's just very ambitious because he's promising her a lot, probably more than he can actually offer. Okay, that's one idea. You feel that based on what we've read so far, he seems ambitious. Right, ambitious because he's mentioned quite a long list of promises oh, yes. that he swears he will fulfill. Could you give me perhaps another idea? What do you think of the shepherd? I would think he is very... I would say selfless. Hmm. He's offering her so much, he probably won't have any left for himself, but that's just because he loves her that much. Oh! I was actually waiting for that answer, because right. it seems that way. But th wouldn't that mean that my six pupils would then be eager to join the shepherd in the countryside knowing that he is so honest yes. and pure and giving so much of himself i think that the term would be head over heels for for this particular right, girl or right love. he's okay. head over heels mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know judging from the smiles whether they are also responding in a similar fashion <laughs> all right yeah so according to delphine wonderful answer selfless shepherd who's promising a lot more than we assume he can give but he's yeah. willing to do his best i like that answer now perhaps the biggest question of all from the three there <laughs> do we think that the shepherd has been convincing and persuasive enough in order to prove his affection for his beloved. Has he been persuasive enough? Angel, what do you think? Hi, Angel. I think uh, you have to unmute your mic. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right. uh, I think he has given a list of promises that he can he can give but i think she's not persuaded she's not entirely convinced yeah. okay. okay all right angel i'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult for you let's just imagine that mm -hmm. you are the lady love and you are the one being pursued by the shepherd according to what you've said you have not been convinced yeah now what shall we tell the shepherd? What more do you want? I accept his proposal because I'm an independent woman and I would oh. rather do things on my own than follow him to the countryside oh. and, <laughs> and flock sheep and juggle and feed the flocks. There we so. go. Independent woman Independent in the house. Independent woman. Don't need no man. She doesn't want to consider this <laughs> proposal. Oh no, but I like that word. Yeah. The fact that this entire pastoral poem mm -hmm. has been a declaration of affection. Yeah. It just 
tells us he's proposing in other words mm -hmm. yes. and she just responded by saying uh, no mm, uh, no <laughs> no thank you <laughs> thank you next right so <laughs> angel says no the shepherd has not been persuasive or convincing enough maybe we could get who shall we call to, um, who to answer we heard, uh, from i think uh, Lynette is giving such a big smile over there. Uh, oh, 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 but oh. I'm not sure whether we should choose uh, or, or anyone else that we haven't given a chance to speak yet. But wait, Lynette is the one who said she was convinced earlier. Let's get a someone bit. else. Let's yeah. get someone else. Uh, maybe. Um, maybe Amanda? Yes, Amanda. Amanda, have you been thoroughly convinced? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Still not yet. Even though finding out that. Uh, the shepherd may or may not be, I mean, may, may be selfless uh, or, or, or proving selflessness. Giving himself yes, everything to the, world. the beloved. Yes. He'll do everything for you. He'll, he'll stand in front of a spitting bullet for you. Maybe, maybe nothing like that, but yes. Still no, Amanda? Well, he promises a lot, but most of it is very materialistic, which is something I don't value. Ah. If, it's really, if it's really love, then the shepherd himself should be enough. None of the other things. Wow. Oh, what a powerful what answer. What a powerful <laughs> answer. Wow. It's not what you can give where you are looking at material mm -hmm. promises, right? Wonderful answer, Amanda. Thank you. So what we looked at was how life in the city is very different from life in the country and what Christopher Marlowe's shepherd here is promising to his lady love is a life that has a uh, very joyful simple daily routines you have a shepherd who seems very earnest very honest very sincere with his affections and you have there these pupils of mine who are not convinced by his promises. And a quick summary is there for everyone to read through. You have there the shepherd who's continuing stanza by stanza, making assurances of what he says is available, what he can make available to the lady love if should she decide to join him in the countryside unfortunately we wonder if mm -hmm. she will actually say yes yeah because the setting is at that time right so our thinking may be different thank you so much again point a for sharing uh, the details and also description and also what this uh, shepherd is trying to convey through his poem and before we end probably you could also give us a recap or a summary of today's lesson all right so what we were able to do today was we were able to look at how visual imagery was used to convey setting as found in the poem. We looked through descriptions of what the shepherd was like. Mm -hmm. Did we feel impressed by his promises? Yes. And also we were left thinking whether the lady love might eventually decide to join him or not yes that's true right and just in case if any of my friends who are online also watching this program right now um how are they able to further enhance their understanding or are there any exercises that you can get uh, ah, from a certain place wonderful question everyone out there do not fear if you need further notes reference materials mm -hmm. regarding literature feel free to go to uh, sumberku at the dilemma portal and over there when you access that website, there's plenty of notes and materials to help you better understand this literature subject. That's right. And also you can actually see the uh, link uh, to that uh, Sumoku platform or resource of where you can find these exercises. Thank you once again, Puan A, for uh, the knowledge sharing that you have today and also, and also the lesson. As well as my friends who are online, we have Amanda, Angel, Delphine, Durga, Lynette, as well as Sophia. Thank you so much for joining us. And for those of you watching at home, hopefully this has been beneficial to you. And we'll see you in our next class. Take care and see you soon.
KPM.